You know those signs that are on lawnmowers that say, don't put hand in spinning blades? There you go. What's good, chat? What's good? Welcome back. It's Sunday night, so we have some viewer games to look at. I preemptively knew that Hydrate was coming, but since the points, the point was spent. What's good, chap? Hope everybody's doing well as the weekend draws to a close. We're going to take a look at some viewer games, and we'll see what we have on in store. We'll see if they are as unhinged, as deranged as the recent... Uh, well, tournament and viewer games have been. They've just all been absolutely bonkers. So we shall see how tonight turns out. Now, I, of course, have to let everybody know at the front that I am part of the content affiliate program. That means Phoebe's team does, in fact, give me coffee for producing Phoebe's content. They're also providing prizes for Monster of the Week as well as the upcoming Fright Night 15. If you've missed it, there should be an announcement going out probably before this video goes live on YouTube, but hopefully anyway. Uh, about it upcoming on April 20th. Announcements already out in my Discord. In fact, the signups are live. Check that out if you're interested in playing or maybe spectating. So what's good, chat? For today, welcome. Uh, DT, welcome. 30 st stream streak. That's kind of challenging to get out. I was going to say stream strunk. And like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, we... Uh, Signups are live. Signups are live. I'm gonna switch this so I, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, Signups are live for Fright Night 15. Uh, we're gonna be using a different site. We're gonna be using Battlefy this time. Um, I, I use or similar sites for other things like when I play in tournaments. Um, and I am asking a little bit more of the players already. I'm getting complaints from people, and that's too bad. <laughs> You're gonna have to deal with it. Uh, because everybody's been making my life like hell during the event. So, uh, th these are the consequences. So, there's going to be more expectations put on the players for what they're going to need to do in order to make sure that the event runs smoothly. We'll see. Obviously, we can adapt in the future. Uh, I want to see how this plays out. Because up to this point, I've talked about it on many occasions, it has been an exercise in frustration. To put it mildly... Put it mildly, it's been an exercise in frustration to try and get these events off the ground, running, and getting cooperation out of people. So, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things go. There are going to be some changes for Monster of the Week moving forward as well. We're going to squeeze down the quantity of events, pooling coffee from one of the three events into the other two, trying to incentivize people to play in them by providing basically participation prizes. There will be coffee going out to all eight players if you complete all the rounds. And we'll see how things do. I'm, I'm trying to find different formats as always to see what is the best way to help the Phobies community, try and set up the best events possible. Uh, maybe we'll have to change them. Maybe we'll have to change things going forward, but we'll, we'll see how this round goes. <coughs> But with that out of the way, let's dive into some of these games. Now, before, actually, before we do, so Steven said we did the game there. Okay, so we did this one. Let me just mark that. We are going to start off with a Renamon game, just not that one. Not that one, because there were some points redeemed. And if you want to see that very, very, very silly game, check out some of the stream recaps. How about them apples? All right. So as mentioned, as mentioned, we're going to dive in with a little Renamon action here. Okay, good. For a second, I didn't think he was switching scenes. <coughs> Excuse me. So what were the notes on this one? Our hero here, obviously, in the blue trunks. Fast game. All right. It's not quite as fast as the other one you sent in, Renamon. I was just starting to watch the Fright Night 14. <laughs> so then, by the time you watch it, you'll be geared up for 15. Um, we are going to keep... Wait, time out. What? I was going to... Hold, hold, please. Bring up Fright Night after the game, because I'll, I'll add some more context. But, like... 
the hell is this? Honestly, did we talk about this? I feel like we talked about this on a different game review, whether it was a viewer game or maybe it was a different one. I don't remember when, but I do remember saying that, like, blue is interesting on this map for this reason. Yeah, you take the panic points slower and all that fun stuff, but blue is pretty cool. First of all, it's blue. Hey, come on. Is there... Show me a person that doesn't enjoy blue being in the game. And I'm going to show you a person that needs to check their priorities. Is this a dead grave digger? Oh, bad guy. How could you not see this coming? How could you possibly not see this coming? Blue saves one key versus Maggie. Honestly, I never really liked Maggie. I always thought if you're going to go for that panic point, like the Gravedigger plan is not something that I typically do, like what Bad Guy did here, but I, I get it. Like it, it's a play you can make. Then Gravedigger comes back around. Maybe you get a little heebie-jeebie special. Maybe you open something up. There's different, like a lot of different plays. But I typically go for a different flyer. Like it's going to be uh, Murder Wing or Tooth Fairy. In my case, Murder Wing, but I can understand Tooth Fairy going for it. For that panic point, I never really like Maggie because Maggie's just not great. Like, I'm, ne I'm never excited to put Maggie on the board. What I am excited about is this blue connection that is just... Oh, th this is just crapping on Unbearable and Cowbell here. Yes, technically our hero gave up one key for free, but did they really, though? Did they really, though? Bad guy just giving up their cowbell, though? I don't know if I love that one. Ooh, actually slapping the inoculus to get the bees. Not quite enough to take it down. Of course, no poison available there. But our hero is going to be able to remove some one keys from the board. The Henrietta does body block. Bad guy with five keys. Did Microscopic always have this glow around it? Like you can actually see it more because of the, the highlight against the red background on the monitor. Did it always have this? I feel like I'm just noticing this. Does Gesundheit have this glow? I don't know. But anyway, it had to have always. It's not like the, I highly doubt the devs edited it last night or something, but... So bad guy here, electing to take out the smoke. Ooh, actually continuing to go for the gin sting. Going to body block with it. This is just wrong. All right, bad guy done goofed here. It was always there because Untight doesn't have it, I think. That's fair. Yeah, like this is exactly the play. Our hero's completely in the driver's seat here. They're up like infinite tempo at this point. Uh, is there a world where... Like, it's extremely unlikely that bad guy has a way to kill this gin sting. Like, it's not impossible, because now Unbearable's back online. The cat gets a hit. You have seven keys, so hypothetically, you could put a hurt on this. Yeah, like, Murder Wing plus something might be able to do it. That's not even enough. Oh, my God. Why you gotta do him like that, Greenmon? Why well, you gotta do him like that? That guy was never in this game. I don't think there was a single turn past, like, turn two where bad guy had a snowball's chance in hell. No pun intended here, because it's snowball. But. And now you get the body block from the the Venus, so, like, you can't even get at the gin sting. I know the note said fast game, but this is this is more like somebody called the police. I'd like to report a murder. Honestly, the muffin is just kind of like salt in the wound. The the muffin is like salt in the wound because it's I really feel like that's wildly unnecessary. <laughs> you just did not need to muffin this. At a 13 game in Moai, we had a seven turn game that was like a legit game the other night. Like it wasn't a, oh, they zoned in and went, all right, I surrender. Dozer for the lulz, GG. 
But yeah, Moai is a pretty quick map. I'm still not a fan of that map, but we'll see. It might, we'll see if when Fright Night... So what I'm going to do for Fright Night is I'm going to change the map rules a little bit. Um, how the map selection is going to work, but we'll play it by ear. Uh, there was something I wanted to comment about Fright Night, and I don't remember what it was. Don't remember. I forgot. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Uh, but yeah, we're going to we're gonna modify the map band system a little bit. I'm trying to find ways to simplify it. I'd love to get rid of the map band system entirely. Um, I want to leave a little flexibility for the players. That's why we're going to do two blanket bands. So I'm going to take two, man, two uh, uh, maps out. And then I'm going to leave two bands, one for each player, to remove things from the pool. And then we'll kind of go from there and see how that feels. I don't know that it's going to make much of a procedural difference because if people can't handle two, why would they be able to handle one? But it is less than two, so we'll see. We'll see. First 100%, absolutely. I had a fast Xylo game, 23 turns, and when they surrendered. <laughs> to be fair, that is fast. That is fast by... by Xylo stand. God damn it, Karst. Karst. Ah! You, get you get one of those because you didn't favor the game. Karst versus Loop Light from the 24th. Is there a chance it's still on the profile? There is not. Womp, womp, womp. Womp, 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 womp. Womp. Yep, this one's not on there, so womp, womp moment. There's the womp, womp. I can hear it. Even though I'm looking at the spreadsheet, I can't see it right now. I don't know if they're trying to say they're bad guys trying to be Frankenstein and they made it Frankenstein. <laughs> or like, what? I don't know. I'm tired, chat, so that was funnier than it probably needed to be. All right, we got some. Is Nuki Poo new? The name sounds familiar, but either way, they're rocking the Leela avatar. Our hero here on hold still with... What are the notes? An intense game showing the defensive capabilities of Baba Yaga even against the game's best stalemate breakers. Also, Russell! I'm guessing Nuki Poo has seen a few streams before. Nuki Poo's name sounds really familiar. But I feel like it would have been a name that I repeated a million times. Because it, it's funny. And I don't remember repeating that name a million times. So, I'm unsure. I'm unclear, chat. It's unknown. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Baba Yaga. Who was our resident Baba Yaga fan? Was it Master Dark? No, it wasn't Master Dark. Who was it? Can't think of their name. There was somebody that used to hang out all the time, like last summer, and they were like an enormous Baba Yaga fan. In fact, I think they were the progenitor of the Baba Ha Ha. This opener is a little weird. The reason I say that is, like, I get why the murder wing had to go center, because otherwise, I think bad guy could have claimed it relatively safely if you sent the murder wing to the north. But the murder wing didn't take your pocket panic point because it was intended to go to the north, but there was no way that you are ever going to be able to, because bad guy was always going to be able to represent that threat, given that the cat was out there. So I think you should have taken the panic point with the murder wing on turn one. That was a very long explanation to just say, like, just, just take the panic point, I think. Um, what do we got here? We got a little Ginsting follow-up. We got Luigi showing up. It's interesting that Luigi is the more prominent brother in this as compared to uh, the Mario version. It's generally due to rarity, but, you know, it is what it is. So we do have Trap Wars going on. We're going to be laying down the minefield here with uh, Baba Yaga versus Poison Ivy. Generally, I would side with Poison Ivy. It's cheaper. Traps are generally more effective. 
Uh, we also have an attractor for bad guy. I'd be using Mario all the time or Waluigi. Is it, it, I get why Hercubees would fall into Waluigi, but like, despite the whole Super Mario Brothers motif, at no point did I look at Hercubees and go, yep, that's Waluigi. To be honest, Klepto screams Waluigi more to me than uh, than Hercubees. But, you know, you got to keep the pattern. I don't like Baba Yaga. Hey, speaking of Mario, there we go. I'm not a huge fan of Baba Yaga. I mean, it's fine. This trap here is kind of weird. Like, it is exceptionally unlikely that it hits three phobies. But, to land down the minefield, it is giving up a big swath of area to the Poison Ivy. And here we go. We get the Akira. Noxious repositioning. Bad guy does have some stuff. The thing is, like, the Jin Sting is positioned really weirdly. Presumably, ooh, let's go. We knew it from the notes. It's a little Russell action. Everybody's favorite bird. Is it everybody's favorite bird? Is there a bird in Phobies that people are more excited about than Russell? Russell! There it is. Chad, I went looking to see if there was, like, a free sound clip that I could use to make the heebie special that I have in my mind of how I want to do it, and it doesn't exist. So I might have to make it, and I don't know how I'm going to do it. So Bad Guy does respond with the quote-unquote Russell counter, the recently nerfed Balloolian. Let's see. I mean, do we have a lot of birds? I, Cassowary, Russell, Edgar... Uh, maybe you could, like, do you count Murderwing? Does Murderwing count as a bird? Um, what other birds do we have? What other birds? I mean, Baba Yaga kind of looks like a bird. It has a beak. Uh, does Klepto count as a bird? It's kind of chicken-like. Fowl? Fowl's a bird? Uh, do we, we don't have a penguin phobie. Like, we, we don't have an ostrich phobie unless, like, is cassowary like our ostriches and cassowaries? They're kind. Are they? I'm gonna need a biologist to break it down for me. Are they the same family? Nuki Poo is gonna listen to their game and like shut up and talk about my game. God damn it! Why are you talking about birds? What are you Alfred Hitchcock? Come on. Deep cuts. Not really deep cuts because Russell's here, and Edgar's in the game. Bad guy playing a really patient with this. Uh... Oh, are we going for it? Because you could pull and then pull off the stat. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. What is happening? Honestly, did bad guy... Well, you probably just didn't have the follow-up you needed. Um, I was going to say bad guy could have done the Akira pull, then pulled off the statue, but I don't think that you would have, like, there wasn't enough damage. By the way, bad guy's down to, oh my god! Whoa! I can't get the HP bars to show! Game! Man, it sucks to be bad guy in these viewer games, don't it? <laughs> that is not a position you want to be in. Oh, I will say, I saw a comment in the last week, maybe two weeks, you know, like since the balance patch, the people, exactly for Tute, that's what I was getting to, people were complaining about the current state of Russell. And I don't know how many people actually have Russell, but Bluelian used to be like, oh, you played Russell? I'll just Bluelian, and the game is basically over. Now, I'll admit I've lost playing, playing 
Boolean into Russell, but it was me streaming it, and it's like, you know, you know me when I'm streaming games. We're just, we're just doing things. However, here, like, yeah, you're curing the poison. Yeah, you're healing up, but, like, there are still two things. One's a undead, but there's still something poisoned. You still have a bunch of things that are heavily damaged. You just, you kind of need the Boolean in advance of the Russell. You need to predict it coming down. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, real talk, they hit three traps. Yeah, Russell's gonna poison either this turn or the next turn. Next turn, next turn. I mean, this game is over. This game was over a while ago, to be honest. Our hero still has seven keys, by the way. I do like this play. This is a great heads-up play. Snipe the attractor with the more B. Our hero making it look easy. All right, so bad guy pulling the same sort of trick. Does get the AOE damage off of Akira. Admittedly, the re well, no. I was going to say, like, the the remaining things are in decent shape. But they're not. It's really just blue lands in decent shape. Everything else is kind of beat to crap. Obviously, Gravedigger dies. I imagine the yoink is up, so you could pull the... Um, the Noxious if you wanted to. I don't know if you want to. Looks like we're going to kill the Boolean somehow. Yep. <laughs> the Muffin that, that has to run the marathon to get up to the top. The Metabot. Ooh, bad guy with the Wrath of Traps. I don't know that it matters. Cooked. I wonder how much power Noxious can actually get behind its flip attacks like that. Like, your the wings would have to be incredibly powerful in order to flip you with enough velocity, probably, to... Because, like, you're not getting the leverage of, like, pushing off the ground. I don't know the physics of this. Somebody will have to correct me. Kill the Russell, because why not? Electric Hat on its way to counter Metabot. I mean, truly. It's the next level plays, DT. It's the big brain plays. In bad guy's defense, like... What are you doing anyway? <laughs> the bad omen avatar. Not pay to win enough, I guess. <laughs> Can't pay to win with avatars. You heard it here first. GG. Got him. Well played. Well played. Next up, we got a returning player, Great Ginger Gabe. It's been a while since we looked at one of Gabe's games. First game back in a while. Well, yes, I was just pointing that out, Gabe. Welcome back. Opponent tried to all in and made for a quick game. I like those because uh, I'm tired. I'm tired. So Russell's good now? Cool? No, not cool. It's actually, like, legitimately, I don't like that. And not because ah, I would. I was using Russell before it was cool. It's not that. It's, I kind of scary to have globals like globals are scary i think there are certain we'll call them rules of the game that need to be respected it's part of the reason why i i don't like shove shark 
I don't like Phantom. I don't like a lot of these things. Um, it's fine that the team added them. Like, all right, they want to change things up. They want to move things. Um, it changes some of the fundamental rules of the game, and I am not a fan of that. It's okay if you do like it. It's fine if you like the way the game is looking. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with it. We'll see. Grimes? Okay. Now I need Zamboni to counter Russell. Honestly, the Russell buff might be a stealth buff to Zamboni. I'm not trolling. Similarly to Leshy. And to be honest, like, an 8-key countering the 8-key is not crazy, right? Like, that's a reasonable thing to happen. You got Alistor from the Silver Season Pack? Nice. I saw people crapping on Alistor. Like, Alistor is not great or in a great spot at the moment, but I don't think Alistor is bad. <clears throat> For the record, I don't know what the hell bad guy was doing going turn one unbearable. Like, I know the note said all in, but like... Conveyor tiles... I... I don't know. Another blue lane, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Very curious plays from bad guy here. They are absolutely going for the heart now. I'll tell you that much. Alistor is pretty good. It was one of the phobies that carried me on my now deleted old vault. I mean, Alistor has a very powerful role in the the closer position of just, hey, you don't have a lot of phobies left. You won't be able to all in this Alistor. It almost sounds like a one. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> it almost sounds like a win more phobia. It's like I'm already winning, so I put this on the board and I win more. But it's not quite that. It's it solidifies and locks down a win because your opponent can't it, they can't lift that weight. Since the Alistor nerf, it's never been the same. It's also a pretty boring phobia. I mean, I get what you're saying about it being boring. I don't think it is, but I can understand why, because it is just, I do damage. I'm a big dummy who punches stuff good. 2-2 two, two that heals itself. Yeah, but the implications of the healing are what makes it, in makes it interesting. So we have, coming back to this game, we did see in the past, I think it was one of the recent Monster of the Weeks, how aggressive this map can be, uh, with people just claiming... As player one, a ton of panic points on this map, putting an enormous amount of pressure. I think this map is pretty good. Um, it can absolutely be very stressful for player two if player one does go for that kind of plan because you got to somehow defend all these panic points, defend your heart at the same time, and fight their stuff. But I think that leads to more exciting games. Unfortunately for bad guy, you're going to learn about some excitement right now. Because even though Blue Lian's nerf happened, uh, it still does a lot of damage. Wait, Spud going there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we only got six phobies. All right. Hematic with the more bees! We get the Mario Luigi combo. Double kill. Uh, interestingly enough, not going for the cat. Don't know if you would have got it, but. Either way. Oh, excuse me. Clay with a paddock point. I presume Bluelian's dead. Yep. Grimes is a growing boy. He's hungry. He's gonna eat. Get the Bluelian back up. Now, Grimes has grown 834 damage. Not an insignificant amount, but... That guy is literally walking, crawling, burrowing, and flying into the teeth of our hero's defenses. I guess their shield wall won't work if all their spears are embedded in our front line. Is that the strategy? I feel like there are many generals throughout history that have tried that plan. 
I don't know how many of those generals had it work out for them. <laughs> I would venture to guess not many. This is kind of how I would I would anticipate those things going down. Oh, you had to double move with this. You didn't have to double move with that, right? Yes, you did. Never mind. Never mind. Murder Wing had to double move. I was I was trying to figure out. Like I thought it was one space closer, so it could have uh, flown there and then poked the uh, the noxious or something. But either way. We're just getting a couple hits going down on this Jin Sting. That's not enough. Egg guy with five keys. Hero with eight. A lot of things in. Ooh. A little Trihorn good boy action. Yoink. Honestly. So the notes indicated that this was supposed to be an all in, which. It is by some definition, but like that guy got nothing going here. There was just no no meaningful offense this game at all. Who was calling Pterodactyl Terry last night? Because like I knew they were talking about Pterodactyl, but it was funnier to me to think of it as Terry Tate office linebacker. Shout out to Terry Tate. If you don't remember or know what those commercials are, go look it up. They're hilarious. Opponent never had an offense. Yeah, like they had a, a panic point advantage, but it was like four to two, which is, you know, like that's not the sneeze at. But like they just kept walking into the attractor and it's like, all right, buddy. You know those signs that are on lawnmowers that say, don't put hand in spinning blades? There you go. Okay, Boomer. That implies that you know what that is for Tute. You know what it is. So what does that say? <laughs> Who are you okay boomering? Although it was funny, somebody said something about Boomer the other night, and I thought they were calling me a Boomer, and they meant the Boomer that was on the board. No clue, but it sounded like something old. I don't remember when it was, but it probably was like late 90s, early 2000s. GG. Um, yeah, it had to be late 90s, early 2000s. The guy who played Terry Tate was in a bunch of other stuff, too. Hang on me in Discord. Want for my life. I'm not going to click on this because I get the sense I'm going to be annoyed when I look at it. So I, I'm not going to let it negatively affect my mood chat. I'm tired of arguing with people. I'm tired of arguing with people. If things work, they'll work. If they don't work, they don't work. It is what it is. We got a we got a twelve turn game from PVZ Burmaid. Dude left the game after he realized there was nothing he could do after I moved high five all the way to his heart. Little spoilers there, don't you think? That's like <laughs> we we would have found out what happened in like ten seconds because this game is very short. But fair enough. Little Shove Shark opener here on Castaway. This was a very popular map for the time that it was available. Again, I'm hoping that the devs introduce the ability for us to build custom map pools by allowing for all maps to be available in front of me at all times. I think that would be cool. Okay, so we have the uh, the new... Uh, I, was th I wanted to think of something better than Dangerous Duo because that... That sounds terrible, and Dynamic Duo makes them sound like Batman and Robin, and a little more heroic than the community's current opinion on these two. But, uh, either way, either way, we got a little Phantom Shove Shark opener. I can see where the high five suddenly becomes an issue. <laughs> Bad guy rocking the primate number nine. He has reasons. 
Okay, so this must have been drawn up ahead of time by PVZ. Because, like, that break and stuff is really weird. So, hypothetically, the grave... Or the, the grave digger. The uh, high five comes out this turn, and then it ends up, I think, on the stim. If it comes out this turn, because it'll walk to, it gets teleported to here, it gets booped. No, it'll end up one past the stim. Yeah, so you boop it. As you move, you boop forward, then you move to the... Or no, you end up two past it. So you do get right to the heart right now. That's kind of cute. I don't know that you needed the, um... The Gravedigger? Gravedigger just kind of seemed on... Because you could have gone here, and then you just do the same thing? I think you could have done the same thing without the Gravedigger, which would allow you for a little more... To have a little more board control, if necessary. Um... But this is a this is a level seven high five. That's still a lot of damage for this level heart. Bad guy trying value. You're gonna get a leap off the stem. You're gonna get the yoink. You're gonna get the sheep. You're gonna get a bunch of stuff. But high five at heart one, turn one to spawn. Yeah, I mean that's it's actually pretty sick when you think about it, right? Like that that's pretty sick. Ooh, the follow-up noxious because you know all this stuff is going to be bunched. You know all this stuff is going to be bunched. Mm, yeah, I think you could have done this differently. Like, I think if the Murder Wing and the... Well, no, the Murder Wing couldn't have done that. You have to yoink and get the, the sheep to connect. Like, the sheep has to connect. I don't know that there was anything bad guy... Oh, my God. That is brutal. That is brutal. I don't... <laughs> okay, so the concession clearly had to do with the high five, right? But the way the notes made it sound was like, high five comes out, bad guy sees, oh, my God, that's on my heart. And then they surrender. That's not what happened. They surrendered because you annihilated their forces after they tried to respond to the high five. But either way, the high five was a core component. So, <laughs> GG. GG. That was actually pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Mushri. Mushri. This game is just like straight up not on your... Is, does Mushri have a different in-game name? So they're saying the game was against Karstral. On the 30th. But the most recent game you have is on the 6th. Mushri's been gone for a long time. Well, the notes say, hey, I just want to submit this game since it's pretty cool. Got an early snipe. So, like, I guess they came back briefly. Let me see if they're... Like, do they have an alt? No. No. But yeah, Mushri, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Like, the last game you have played on your profile is the 9th of March from this year. And then, like, some of these are pretty old. <laughs> I mean, your favorite games are very old. But, uh, yeah, this doesn't look like it's on there, so we're going to move on. Womp wah.
All right, so what I believe is the fifth game of the evening, we got a little noob sim action on Phobopolis. Who do you like more, Mr. Tramples or Chuck? And it, yes, the feeling of winning the first time against a very strong opponent who always beats me is one of the most enjoyable experiences ever. There, it's true. We're all in agreement to not favorite games. If you want to keep hearing the tilt button, then yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Leo Rob, what's good? Welcome, welcome. Ah, my wrist is messed up, chat. Like I, I think I legitimately have carpal tunnel now. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I need to look up some wrist exercises. To... E Louise, sounds like you were a bot. Get wrecked. Also, get out of my chat. <laughs> So we get an interesting break down here. This has come up before, but it's been a long time since we saw this Gravedigger break to, to claim the panic point like that. It's fine, I guess. I mean, you're going to kind of want the um, the Terraform over time anyway, but I would much rather have what bad guy's putting on the board here and crush more. It's a lobber. It's obviously much more threatening. Uh, it still offers the Terraform. It does come online later, but, you know, it's fine. It's a big map. I don't know if you guys can hear the whistling noise from this water bottle when I drink out of it. I presume you can, because it's, you know, it's on my mouth and it's right here by the mic, so. I think the other one's quieter. I don't know if you can hear the slurping. Yo, Gonzo coming out. This is not your... Bad side? Really? Mm, press X to doubt. Oh, the heebie-jeebie special. God, I really want to make this sound bite, but I need to... I'm going to have to create the damn crowd noise that I want. Because uh, I can't find a sound effect that I like. Get close to the mic, we can't hear the whistle AM ASMR. <laughs> People used to, I remember for a long time before Phobies on my stream, people loved the beard ASMR because I had a much longer beard during uh, during COVID. So I would like, I had a really long beard and I would sit there and comb it while I was streaming and everybody's like, the beard ASMR. I still see Louise is not deleted. That's probably, ooh, Hevo 3.0. That's probably because I think you said you have better TTV, right? Steven, I think there are some extensions that allow you to continue to see deleted messages because of the way Ch Twitch's API works on the back end or something, but it should have deleted the link. You get a little Chuck coming down, obviously pretty good on this map. Um, Wooly bully. All right, look, noob sim. I appreciate that you were you're getting excited, or we're excited that you got the W against an opponent. Apparently, was beating you a lot, but like, I gotta, I gotta question the woolly bully here. I gotta question the woolly bully here. The Gonzo Hevo combo, great, goes a long way. Gets you a lot of like, you've increased your power level to above nine thousand. But I don't know about the woolly bully. Bully Bully seems a little sus. That's a blue. That's bad news for Hevo. Believe it or not, Hevo does not allow balloons at their Molotov cocktail parties. It's still viewable, it's not deleted yet. That's my point, is like because you have that extension, I think it will never show it's deleted. Bully isn't bad, and against Chuck, it cripples it. I think in general that's true. I don't know if I agree with it on this map. Uh, I think it's just going to be very difficult to get the Wooly to connect without incinerate. So, like, here's the thing. On this map, they tend to be very long, drawn-out, grindy games, right? It It's rare that you just explode and just annihilate your opponent, right? It's often you pick a phobia off here, you pick a phobia off there, and then eventually you build incremental advantage. If you're just sending in five keys and then your opponent blows it up and then walks away to wait a few turns while you're winning one panic point to zero, essentially, 
you're not gaining a significant advantage. Um, at least in my opinion, like you've you've set five keys on fire to deal like eight hundred damage to the heart. Maybe that that's fine, I guess. But bad guy decided to leave a whole lot of things in range because reason. Like this is the game here. When I said that you don't typically get these annihilation plays, I guess I was incorrect. So our hero spreading the damage around a little bit. I I don't know about that. What? I feel like they didn't do a whole hell of a lot of damage. I, mean, I guess because they only hit once. So what did they get? They got the murder wing and the blue. You're going to lose the Hevo, but the Hevo got the snot kicked out of it. So this is actually... Oh, no. Bad guy. That's not the boop you want. This is not the boop we're looking for. Uh... At least not if you're bad guy. I do love the Gargles play. The Gargles is kind of cute. Blasto, huh? Okay. We do have a Mr. Tramples angle in the north. Yeah, you come up here, you swing back. Ooh, we're going for the Chuck. All right. Wooly Bully just going to knock the crap out of Chuck. Yeah, that's a dead Chuck. I get this sense that bad guy probably straight up forgot that they could walk through even though they just did it. Also, by the way, the aggressive panic point capture thanks to Mr. Tramples. Zero phobies is zero phobies. How impactful was this bully bully power down? It turned off the bad side, but like... I don't know that it mattered at all. Kind of feels like it didn't. Gargles is back this turn, right? Yeah. I'm a little... Wait, could the Hevo not have positioned on the panic point? Why wouldn't you put the, the Hevo on the panic point? Because then it could immediately start attacking the heart as a lob. Could it not have reached? I don't remember where it started. This was actually a very quick Phobopolis game, all things considered. But Bad Guy kind of offered some stuff up that probably didn't need to. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, there's nothing bad guy can do. There's no way you can stop this Mr. Tramples. Ooh, the good boop. Good boop getting a lot of damage onto the Hevo and the Gonzo, but uh, that's a lot of damage going down on your heart regardless. Pretty sure the Gonzo's live this turn, too. There you go. GG. Well played, Noob Sim. That was pretty cool. I still am skeptical of the Wooly Bully. I like Wooly Bully in general. I just don't know if it mattered here. It did turn off the uh, the bad side for a few turns, but I don't know if it would have represented any damage. Like, the Gargles was way more impactful because it didn't allow the bad side to get through to connect with anything. So, our hero was able to push through, but bad guy was not. Um... But the turn where they gave up the chuck, like, that probably didn't need to happen. But either way, GG. GG. That was weird. That's not... Uh, I think that was five. Ooh, week one completed. I completed five games, chat. Go me. Is the game going to crash? Game crash. Quick, everybody panic! Everybody panic! Shit. All right, you stuck with me for a minute, Jack, because it still thinks that, um... It still thinks that Phobies is running, so I gotta wait for Steam to make up its mind. All 
All right. Uh, library. Phobies is, in fact, not running. We'll force exit it through Steam. Stopping. Stopping. Littering and. Littering and. Littering and. Come on, chat. I know you know that movie. You know that movie, chat. I don't want a large Farva. I want a goddamn liter of cola. <gasps> I get 36 coffee, chat. A winner is me. All right. Uh, let's go. Getting back in there. Got Jeremy. Shout out to Jeremy. <laughs> Name will never not make me laugh. Jeremy, bringing it back. I was about to say bringing it back to Phobopolis, but it's not. It's rush hour. Using Cerberus, Hydra, and Shove Shark to break through the defenses of a sum of all fears three player with a huge level advantage. All hail the slugs. I don't know about that. That sounds like some uh, terminated sympathizers. Terminated sympathizing there. Jeremy, I don't know about that one. I didn't get to really play any uh, Helldivers 2 recently, chat, like the last few days. It feels like it's been forever since I played Helldivers 2, and it hasn't been that long. The bad guy with the werewolf opener, I get the, the double good boy opener. Is that enough to cook this? If it's not... Okay, I was about to say, like, if that doesn't actually get it, I'm gonna be good. Like, come on, buddy. Come on. A little rusty action. You love to see it. Don't take it the wrong way, Jeremy. I'm not rooting for bad guy. It was just kind of funny that they went in like that. Now, you're offering up some stuff to this werewolf that's about to transform. That being said, without Fireball and, like, not a great leap, they... I. And you'll be able to lock it down with Rusty. This is bold from... Wait, what? Really? Alright, I get the sense bad guy is just kind of doing things. What level was the tickles? That was a level 13 tickles. This is a... Level 13 werewolf. Level 19 snowball, though. <laughs> Yeah, about that level advantage. It does do some things. So, we do get the lockdown here. Here's the thing. Like, bad guy really overplayed their hand here. Like, you're really going to trade werewolf for a cat and tickles? Because I think that's what's about to happen. Yeah, get the grave digger out of there. Even on the panic points, DT's favorite bird here in Cassowary. Cassowaries are really creepy. And if you don't believe birds are dinosaurs, just look at a cassowary. Look at a cassowary. Wait, we're going after the... I guess uh, our hero here is waiting for the, uh, the werewolf to transition back to its smaller form. Gonzo follow-up. Ooh, the body block here, making sure that less damage going down on the Klepto. I do appreciate Bad Guy's usage of Charon on this map. We played a couple games of this the other night, and I... I need to use the tractor. I just was desperately trying not to. And like, a tractor is kind of king here, right? <clears throat> uh, I'm sure Bad Guy knows this, but, like, that Klepto's going to be able to lob these to death. You're going to Gonzo. You're going to Klepto. Unless this kills it. Oh, you had an extra hit. No! No! And with the body blocks here, is that werewolf going to escape with its life? I don't think it will because you can still... Yeah, there's ways to do this. Might not even need to activate Gonzo. Nope. You can get the challenge play onto the the uh, 
the healing spa. Let's go. Look at that. Just lining them up and knocking them down. That's a level 18 Charon. I think we're looking at like 18 to 19, uh, well, and some 20s on everything here with the exception of that werewolf. Which is understandable. It's an ultra rare. It's a newer ultra rare, etc. Bad guy's offensive is broken. Retreating tail be between their legs. Trying to stabilize desperately. But our hero can't get cocky. Who else is pinging me in Discord now? Oh. Something in the main Phobies Discord. I'll look at that later. I was responding to yet more... Uh, balance complaints. Not complaints, but just comments. It was actually, like, a reasonable conversation, which is insane to think about, like, having a reasonable balance conversation on the internet. It's unheard of. Caron is 450 damage right now. He's a hefty boy now. He's a big kid. You can put up big kid numbers. Kind of. I mean, at level 18, you would think that, like... <laughs> well, he's over 500 damage. Never mind. He's not 450. He's 529. All right, so bad guy has solidified their position. They have a panic point advantage. They have the chunkier phobies. Until that. Evo damage? Exactly. Yeah. What was it before? Was it 300 or was it 325? It was just, like, arbitrarily low. Interesting that Shove Shark is beaten feet to get to or get away from the Cerberus. You would think it would it would kinda hang out in its back pocket. So it's interesting because the bottom of Charon's torso lights up as though it's on fire, right? But then it turns the ground to mud. Or poop. Whichever you would prefer. I don't know. I just find it a little weird. Yeah. Alright, so we're building our concave. Building up the push. Five keys remaining to five. Bad guy making their move to take over the board. Get that level 20 out of here. Boop. Is this going to snipe it? Yo, the juiced bow taking down Inoculus with the snipe. Panic point advantage hero. That was a good play. I could have paused and clicked on it to see that, but it's more fun to watch it live. Live. Emphasis on said air quotes. Honestly, bad guy's in a bit of a pickle here. Probably take down the bow. Or, yeah, because of the lava. Our hero did, no longer has shove shark as an option to them for a turn while it cools down. But... They can still get that Cerberus right in bad guy's face if they want it. Do they want it, though? Goodbye, Bo Mangles. We'll see you in Killer, Clown Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I wonder which one Bo... Bo is based on it, right? Because the, the flavor text on Bo, I think, is a reference to it. And there's the uh, four-cost Hydra. Or four-cost Hydra. Four-cost Cerberus. I forget who... Somebody new was asking, like, why is... Like, Hydra's just a worse brute worst. I'm like, sorry, friend. You actually have that backwards. <laughs> brute worst is just an inferior Hydra. I'd have to actually compare the stats of Brute Wars to Cerberus. 
But I have a feeling Cerberus is still better just because of the fact that it can heal itself. So it's more likely that it'll it'll do more. And I have to imagine that it has more stats. Maybe it doesn't. It's a Hydra in jar range, but honestly... Bad guy in shambles. I do like this this line, this strategy from our hero with the, the double chunky setup. The problem is and I don't want to take away from, from Jeremy's play or anything, but like a bad guy offered some stuff up that didn't need to die at different points. B didn't go Attractor or Akira. In fact, they didn't go any displacement phobies, did they? Hydra the Jar Sniper? True. The clearly intended design role for Hydra. The obviously intended design role. Bad guy desperately trying to make something happen. Don't think it's going to happen there, bad guy. Stabby's got to be dead, right? Ginseng might be dead? Nah. I thought Gonzo might be up. Oh, this is cute. Punch Stabby right in the neck. Even gonna die to lava. Well played, Jeremy. This is well done. Like I said, I don't want to take anything away from the victory because it was definitely well earned, but there are some, we'll say, flaws in both the strategy and tactics for bad guy. Strategy and tactics could both use some work for bad guy here. Charon. Going on heart push duty. To be honest, you could probably walk Cerberus to the heart in time to still race the Charon. Which appears to be the plan. Yep. GG. Well... Played. I'm tired, chat. Bad guy making their best effort, but panic point advantage. And Cerberus. And like, what is Cerberus racing? Caron and Clinico. <laughs> <laughs> the gonzo Cerberus. Oh, no. Get him. Get him, boy. Get him. Get him. That's actually hilarious. 1,700 damage and change. Comical. Seems all right. Interesting. Interesting. Wait, I just realized something. Hold, please. I wonder if this is Mushri's intended account. Because I just noticed as I was updating the spreadsheet that Mushri had a game earlier. Yeah, that, so Mushri put in the wrong name. So we'll go back and do Mushri's game. They put in... They didn't put in the punctuation on their name. So that's why we when we looked at their account, it was all old stuff. I'm still going to give you a tilt for that one. Ah!
I'm still going to give you a tilt for that one because, like, how, how am I supposed to know that? It was only the only reason I noticed this is because I was lazy about fixing the spreadsheet from last week. So I didn't move over the games that were completed to the completed tab. So it left that there. If I didn't do that, I never would have thought about it. So you got lucky. This just this once. I opened the stream and the skeleton screaming is the first thing. People have been very frustrating lately. <laughs> I imagine there's going to be a lot of tilt presses during Fright Night. So one thing I will say is I am going I kind of want to try streaming the Swiss rounds again. And that's part of the reason why I'm going to this new system the new platform is because if I don't have to manage as much on the admin side that can free me up to do the streaming part of it, it's way easier to do it on the top eight because the top eight will, you know, like there's only eight players to manage. So even if they're screwing things up, I can just kind of brute force it, but it does detract from the stream when I have to, like, I can't talk to stream. I got to go argue with the players because they didn't read the instructions that they all said they did. Um, but it, with the platform enforcing things like the check-ins and the timeouts and stuff like that, I don't have to manually do all that. So I hypothetically could stream it. I don't know that I will this time. We'll see how it goes because it is a new platform and there, there might be kinks that come up as we're going through. We'll see. At level one, how much HP does Hydra and Blondie have? I don't know offhand, Steven. You can check in the Phobie Finder in Discord. When was Fright Night? Last month. And the next one will be this month. <laughs> uh, it'll be the 20th of this month. It was the 23rd, I think, last month. I don't remember. All right, so we're going back in the list because uh, somebody didn't enter their own name correctly into the spreadsheet. Mushri! Mushri! Is our hero here. ART, it's me again. I just wanted to submit this game since it's pretty cool. Got an early snipe on a very specific phobia that would have destroyed me, and I managed to beat a guy with 50 more levels than me. All right, Mushri. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Mushri keeping a classic rock in the razor mouth avatar. There's something to be said about the originals. All right, bad guy. Public enemy number one right now with the tractor out on the board. Very interesting opener from bad guy. Very, very interesting. We'll see how hard our, our hero wants to defend. They're going to go with a little daisy here. Uh, Okay. I appreciate the date. Well, okay, never mind. I was going to say the daisy hanging back might be to avoid taking damage and stuff. Because then, hypothetically, it dies, and then you can drone it. But I doubt bad guy has enough damage to do that. Hydra and Cerberus have 3k HP. The Glob, Blondie, and Brute Worst, 2,500. Shout out to DT with the knowledge. So Brute Worst is not only a worse Hydra... It's also a worse Cerberus. Sucks to be the Sausage Man, apparently. I really wanted the Phoebe to actually be the Fork chat rather than the Sausage. That would have been so funny. That would have been hilarious. Also, at this point, how many food allergy and food poison related Phobies do we have? We got Bad Sushi, we got Brute Worst, we got Muffin, we got Cupcake. Are there any others? And I'm not going to stretch it to include, like, sheep and gas or things that you could hypothetically eat just because you want to include that. Ooh, the shove shark play to snipe the attractor. Well done, Mushri. Well done. Because, get it? Because the tractor got cooked. Ah. 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 Zappy. For reasons unknown. I mean, it's to answer giggles, but like... Is that really necessary? Is that, is that really, really what the, the game plan is here? 
Quagmire's off on the quest to find the Holy Grail or something. What, what the hell are you doing up here, Quagmire? And I know you, you want to claim that panic point, but I don't think that's going to work out for you. I was about to say jar to snipe. Man, bad guy. Come on, bad guy. Come on. You're looking like me. Yo, Dial? How often do you see a 7 to 2 Bobby advantage like this? By the way, <laughs> Hero locked in Quagmire. Quagmire could not escape. Just pointing it out with that concave up there in the north, Quagmire couldn't get out of there. Bad guy, more like sad guy. Ah, ah, ah. Got him. Well done, Steven. <laughs> Do I need a crying emote chat? Or crying channel point redemption? I don't even know what bad guy does here. Our hero with 10 keys available. I mean, they're maxed out. Wait, you're going <laughs> to... Okay, so this kind of makes sense because, like, if you kill it with giggles, it's going to get pulled into the pit, but that's not what's going to happen. You're going to hit it once. You probably kill it with jar or something. You could even body block with a flyer. Like, the murder wing's already out on the board if you want to do it that way, but... Honestly, you could have moved the shove shark up to prevent the murder wing from getting pulled. If you really wanted to, that is. I don't think it really matters. Somehow, our hero has nine keys and bad guy has nine keys, but our hero has way more phobies than bad guy does right now. And our hero also, like, this is just... This is like a textbook dismantling. You couldn't take something apart any better if you had 35 years of experience and the manual. Admittedly, bad guy has a 5 to 0 panic point advantage, but like, let's be real. This is not. Oh, you missed the shove shark play, unless we're going to do something else here with shove shark. Could have shoved the, the erratic up to get two hits. Oh, we're going we're gonna to shove the giggles. Would it not have been better to, to shove the... Uh, the shark twice? Or the shove the, the shark twice, the erratic twice? Yo, Rambolina. Okay. I was thinking there might have been a Rambolina boot play there, but it can't reach. It had to double move to get to that position. Our hero is under pressure. Like, that beauty hypothetically still wins the game. That's scary to think about, like, how far ahead our hero was, and yet they could hypothetically still lose this game. It's exceptionally unlikely that they do. I mean, they admittedly did submit the game. But uh, it is kind of spooky scary that it's even remotely possible. Jar sacrificing itself for the team. Allows Rambo to take the point. Jinsting takes the other. So panic point pressure is off. We're simply down to Shove Shark and Beauty lighting up the heart. Chat, I don't like this map. I'm not a fan of this map. Wait, what? Hold on. So bad guy cannot kill this turn. It can't kill the heart this turn unless I'm miscounting. Because you're you're going to be like around 2200 damage. Can the beauty die? One, two, three. So you can get one hit, two hits, two hits, one hit. Yeah, the beauty dies. But a lot of damage has to go down on the beauty. I feel like... We'll see how this ends up, but I feel like bad guy... Hypothetically wins if they just went base? Like, I don't think our hero... Could kill both. Yeah. 
I'd have to actually do the math, and we all know I'm not gonna do that. But like, I feel like bad guy should have just punched heart there. I think that muffin is a turn too late. I think if this muffin was out here ahead of time, maybe bad guy had a chance because it would have healed it, and then you could blom. 2218, they were 2350 something, I think. So they, they they were not killing it that turn for sure. The question is, if they went full heart, could one of the two phobies, either Shove Shark or Beauty, survive? Because if either of them are alive for the following turn, I think our hero dies. My god, why why are you running? I do love that Rambolina got used. I do love that Rambolina got used. So I will say, for a moment, I kind of wanted our hero, because bad guy ran away, I wanted our hero to lock the muffin in and pass turn. Because look, you're dead. Just leave the muffin there so I can kill it. Don't walk it away and then make me do other stuff hoping that I disconnect. Just... Mushri, just lock them in and don't let them leave. Just pass turn. You can kill them on the follow-up turn, but it, it was funny. It would have been funny. GG. Yeah, I, I kind of want to go back and do the math to see, but I don't, I don't care that much. I don't care that much. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I think we did seven games, Chad. I think we did seven. We I had to jump around a little bit. Um, the Karst game, as far as I can tell, I don't think Karst has an alt, so I'm pretty sure the Karst game is toast. Ooh, Sir Clueless with a dial avatar. Sir Clueless here, rocking the dial on like and subscribe. Hey, how about that like and subscribe? Help me out. Uh, ultra rare, good boy, mirror match. So it looks like a little werewolf might be in our future. Two werewolves, one might say. What the hell is this? This actually, like, legitimately might be someone's hell. You got earwigs. They're creepy-ass bugs. You got toesies, a lot of people hate feet, and then head crabs. I imagine most people would not be fan of head, head fans of head crabs. Wait, what? Are we sit? Is this whole game? Oh, are we going Jaws? A Jaws mirror? That would actually be dope. Dude, is this is Jaws the new meta on like and subscribe? Because the last time we saw like and subscribe, I think it was in Fright Night. And we did see some Jaws plays there. Is Numbskull higher damage or is Steel Jaw? I think Steel Jaw is, right? Chat, hold on. Since everybody's going to ask, level 14 versus level 12, our hero is at a two level disadvantage on the Jaws. I imagine it still comes down to whoever hits first and not much else. Somebody was asking in the main Discord what is Jaws because like it's it's kind of a dog or whatever and but it has a bone on top. So like where did that come from? And I'm like, did you look at the body? It's all sewn together. It's clearly parts from different things. Oh yeah, Slayer has more damage than Numbskull. I figured that it did, because Numbskull has the AoE, so there has to be like it's gotta give something up, right? Um Maybe both players don't have it, or maybe Sir Clueless does, but said, you know what? I'm going to do exactly what you're doing. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. In fact, I can I can Dozer. Dozer was has come up because Kars... Dozer seems to be Kars... Uh, <laughs> like, target the last couple days. Kars was crapping on Dozer. Boop. 1,500 
95 damage. And to be perfectly honest, it probably was going to do more. Yeah, it was going to do more. That was just what the numbskull's health was. Lol. Okay, so we got Firkin to counter the jaws? Question <laughs> mark? Like, is that actually what's happening? Chat. Okay, chat, hold on. I'm going to pause. Just a casual 1500, just throwing it out there. Let me know in chat right now, in YouTube. Let me know in the comments before you... Like, you can pause the video and do this. Do you think Sir Clueless is going to eat Dozer with Jaws? Let me know right now. Do you think that's going to happen in this game? Because that would be the ultimate show of dominance, right? Like, I don't even need my eight keys. I'm going to feed it into Jaws. <laughs> that would be... Wait, time out. <laughs> you just furking the goddamn Rusty. Why is this happening? Frosty? Okay, yeah. Ultra rare gaming much? What is happening? Chat, what is this game? These aren't the most unhinged games, but they're pretty unhinged. Why did we break that? Just a... Okay, I mean, I guess a, that's a lot of damage. Oh, we're gonna puke on it. Okay, that that's still good. Yo, it's Steel Jaw! You, you gotta move that Grave Digger, though. Okay, okay. I thought Fergan would disable Dozer, so might as well eat it. Fair. I love the puff response. <laughs> oh my god, chat. This game is wild. Tick. Do real life ticks only have one eye? Or is this an aesthetic design choice? I've never looked at a tick that closely. They're, they're uh, disgusting creatures. Not a fan of ticks. It's one of those things that I feel like I know and that I've forgotten. Hence why I'm, I'm asking it. Because it's like, yeah, I, I know this, but I don't really remember. Okay, so bad guy does have a freeze play, but then we have... No, we don't have the, uh... The thaw immediately. So, like, you can thaw Dozer right away. That guy's just dead, right? The jaws might go down. We have one, two, three, four... Five, six. So you can only add one more phobie. You gotta find a way to kill the... Okay, so we're going for the thaw here. Okay. But the Jaws is just dead, isn't it? 2200 health. Yeah, that Jaws is dead. By the way, our hero has more damage on their Jaws right now. I don't really agree with this play. I think you would have been better off thawing Dozer. And then using Dozer. Ooh! Ooh, I didn't know they... Whoa! That is... Okay, I didn't know they had a Hevo. All right. That is ridiculous. That's an incredible play. That, that play is sick. That play was sick. That is savage. That is savage. You know, to be honest, I should have seen the Hevo coming, given what's already hit the board. Like, what's another ultra rare at this point? <laughs> what did... Oh, they turned off... Yeah, what did Firkin turn off? Was it the Rusty? It was the Rusty, right? This is actually a cool play. Body blocking out the Brony. And the heart will block line of sight. And I'm pretty sure the statues do too. So, like, you got to choose between these two. And one of them is all up on... Well, both of them are all up on your heart. 2,200 damage on this Jaws. We know who the superior shark is. Okay, chat. I've talked before about wanting to do, like, phobies 
t-shirts kind of thing or Phoebe's designs. And I kind of want to do one that's like Jaws, Shove Shark, Finnegan, and Slammerhead and be like, uh, if not friend, why shark shape? And then just have like their silhouettes on it. I think that would be cool. What do you think, chat? Good idea or not? All right, come on. Go eat the dozer just for the lulls. Especially because now it's powered down. Go eat the dozer. I mean, bad guy surrenders here or dies. GG. <laughs> okay, like I said, maybe not the most unhinged games we've ever seen. These are some pretty... This, this game would not qualify in my book as hinged. Oof. That's a game, chat. All right, I think we can get in, like, two more. But I'm going to take a quick break, chat. Uh, we'll jump back in. People are continuing to add stuff. We have, like, a ton more games in the queue. We'll, uh... <laughs> the Dar side? Question mark? They're not sure. They're not clear. All right, chat, I'll be right back. Don't go away. All right, chat, we're back. I was responding to Karst in Discord briefly. If you heard the sound cut in and cut out. Uh, the conversation is about balance and people's perspectives on the meta and things like that. And I think everybody's pretty much roughly on the same page of like, hey, there's no way that any of us have like a really good sense of the meta because ladder is a shit show. No matter what, because of the way ladder works, and then on top of it, we have only our our essentially anecdotal evidence for anything. Like I look at a lot of games, but I don't look at tens of thousands of games, which is what's being played. I don't even look at all of any of the top ten players' games. I try to look at a lot, but you know, obviously, observing them takes time, and taking notes takes time, and really thinking about it takes time. Like we can't run it through a simulator, the devs can, to try and spit out a bunch of statistics. So, <clears throat> one of the things that I had just said in Discord was, like, I've thought about setting up a a Google form to allow people to be like, hey, I played against Alien Engineer. I played against a Markand. I played against insert person that's high up on the ladder, whatever. And these are the things that I saw. Like, I won, or we were on this map, I won, they won, I'm at this struggle stress level they're at the, that stress level i use these phobies they use those phobies and then we can crunch a bunch of numbers that way but the amount of effort that would be involved in both building it so that it's reasonable to use and then even when i say reasonable to use imagine that there's like 30 drop downs or however you know like whatever the minimum amount of phobies that you could use on a small map, which I guess hypothetically could be every one key and then every two key, and it's like, it's a huge number, but say we pick some arbitrary number like 12. So 12 times, you gotta go through a 170 something list, item list of phobies to select which phobies you used, and then do the same thing for them. And then what happens if both people put it in? Like, how do we, do we count that as separate games? How do we know because if both people are trying to be eager to participate, how do we prevent one from overriding the other or duplicating the other? Um, there's no real great way to, to do this for the data collection unless there was only a handful of people doing it and then they broke it up themselves and said, okay, you track these players, you track these players, you track these players. And even then there would be overlap because what happens when those players play each other. And... Even if there was communication and that was perfect, that's still an enormous amount of data entry for people to do. When the devs could just give us the stats, they just don't want to. It's a little unfortunate. Shove Shark and Phantom are secretly delivery men who deliver phobies right to your doorstep. Somebody must have been here for that earlier game. <laughs> that castaway game, whoever it was. Pinapple, back in action on Transact Decline, up against bad guy, fittingly, Darth Sith. How redundant. 
It's funny because I've been playing a lot of Star Wars Unlimited chat. I really do like that game. Uh, I want to produce content. I actually have my my second mic, and I'm setting up the the table that's down here next to me so my wife and I can try and record some gameplay. We'll see. We'll see. The notes here are a very close game that showcases the rarely seen furnace face in action. It's rarely seen, but yeah, it's just rarely seen. Uh, I am curious, like, is furnace face... Okay, why did bad guy... I guess bad guy didn't want to take this top point because they didn't want to lose the one key to the combination of canine plus jar. But now you give up the panic point and you took damage on this. So, like, what did this get you? Look what your careless hands have wrought. But yeah, Chad, let me know if you'd be interested, or you on YouTube, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing, like, physical real-life gameplay. I also... I'm getting pretty close to prototyping the umpteenth time uh, the game that I've been designing. So I was thinking about doing, like, dev design journals of once I get this to prototype and it's like, okay, this is going to be the way the rules are going to set up. This is the way things are going to uh, play out for the game. Because if I go to prototype it and I test it and it turns out, hey, this is crap, I'm going to scrap it and start over. So it's kind of a waste. Um... But I'm considering doing dev diaries once I get to a more stable position with the game and then releasing my thoughts of like, hey, I built this game. It's still in testing, but here's why I did things this way. Here's what I want to do. Here are the goals so that people understand. And also, I think it might be interesting just to talk about it, but maybe nobody gives a damn. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. So we do have the aforementioned titular Ernest Face. Picking his ears. I guess those are supposed to be ears. Like, I, I don't know. The the weird quirks that some phobies have are really cool. Like, I appreciate that the devs added these little things to their idle animations and breathing animations and stuff like that. Uh, like, Furnace Face doesn't have to eat random rocks that are clearly supposed to be coal to keep it going. Crushmore doesn't have to keep picking up his head. Uh... I mean, some of the phobies just kind of stand there. You can see, like, the cats, they'll chomp at the air or something periodically, but that's about it. Um, I wonder how many of the early phobies, like, at least 1.0 phobies, have those sort of things versus later phobies. Because the release 1.0 phobies do have a lot of emotion and life to their anime. Wait, what? Ernest face sounds interesting when it moves. It does. Although it might be one of those things that like some people will just hate, right? You know what I mean? I have no idea why Heartbreaker just happened for the record. Ernest face releasing its own version of Sheep and Gas's fart. It absolutely looks like it's farting in the animation. It looks like a cartoon fart. Like a character that's trying to squeeze one out when you watch a cartoon, like it, 100%. But I will tell you this much, chat. I did not have Furnace Face Foul on my bingo card for viewer games tonight. But then again, the viewer games are, are forever unhinged. All right, we're getting the lockdown here. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter because this... Heartbreaker can yoink the foul if it wants to, but I don't know if bad guy has enough damage to get the foul and everything else. One, two, three, four phobies. Only three keys remaining, though. Requiring the Venus to kill... That can't... Oh, that's bad. And that means... Okay, so we do get to take down here the stabby... Did the Stabby attack the Foul? Because if it didn't, it needed to move here. Wait, we just passed turn? Why didn't you attack the Heart? Could you not have walked up and hit the Heart with Furnace Face? You still would have been in the, um... In the smoke. Regardless, we're cooking, cooking the heartbreaker.
I feel like there was a missed opportunity there where our hero could have hit the heart one more time. Now, like, the game is hypothetically in danger. It's not really, because, again, fire damage, so, like, the freeze here on Tooth Fairy does effectively nothing. Wait, really? Wow. Can't kill the Tooth Fairy. That's rough. Does the smoke actually affect the heart? I don't believe so, because normally, like, I can click on Furnace Face. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on a second. Let me go back. Wait, there was... Yeah, there's smoke here, right? Yes. So if I click on Furnace Face... Ooh, it looks like it does. Does it say it doesn't? That has to be a visual bug, right? There's literally no other tiles in the game that affect the heart. I mean, I guess the only one that could hypothetically do it is lava or fire. That's a, I guess that begs a question. Can you put a lava tile with Prometheus under the heart? I would have assumed not. Because, like, I had thought that you couldn't put tiles under the heart. Because if you hit, like, if Furnace Face were to hit bad guy's heart, there's no fire. It doesn't happen. It's intended? Really? Was that confirmed for Tute? I don't think that, like, Furnace Face, as the notes indicate, comes up so rarely that... I don't know that this interaction has ever been asked about. Or at least, I haven't asked about it. But you can clearly see, like, what I was going to say is... You can click under Furnace Face and see the smoke, and then... Oh, well, you can't click and see the smoke underneath, but you can. So it seems to be that, yes, the smoke does affect it. Anyway, we'll skip ahead. Bad guy can't kill the, uh, the Tooth Fairy. Opens the pathway. And that's a dead heart. GG. I think there was that misplay in there that almost put the game in doubt, but Pinapple takes it. GG. All right, chat. I think we can get him one more. For this evening. <laughs> we have had some funny bad guy names tonight. But Bronze Elf 2345 is our hero. Was a bit of a level advantage, but was the best Bad Omen hit you will ever see. Alright, I'm excited to see. A has, I feel like Bad Omen has fallen off, chat. Which, it never really was hugely meta to begin with, I don't think. And I always chalked it up to being, it's an ultra rare, not enough people have it. And then when people got it, they didn't have enough time to level it up. Because even though it is a, on the surface, a very powerful effect, uh, if it's under leveled, it's, you might just be incinerating two keys. But it feels like an omen should be played more than it is. But I don't think I've seen a bad omen in a very long time that I can recall. Maybe we have, and I, I'm just, again, forgetting. We watch a lot of phobies. But it seems like there hasn't been a lot of bad omen. And I think that's incorrect. Bad omen to me honestly kind of feels like a unique way to make melee relevant. Um... What I kind of want to see, now that I'm thinking about it, is a leap phobie with a power down on attack hit. So imagine if Cassowary maybe did less damage, but when it hits its target on the leap, or I guess on any attack, it depends, um, it automatically powered stuff down. Like, that would be a way to have... A, and you could even make it do like very, not like half -y low damage, but have it do low damage, and then that way it has a ton of HP, so we can go in and live, and then kind of, ideally it would lead the way for a bunch of melee stuff, but what would really happen is you'd go in, power down one thing, and then your range guys would collapse and try and overwhelm them, because obviously you're going to use ranged instead, right? Either way, we do see an attractor, the corn narrowly escaping becoming popcorn. 
instead of ending the turn on the lava. Um, we were talking about it earlier, but this is an attractor map. Um, ooh, Scritch. Who was talking about Scritch? I just saw something with Scritch in Discord. Um, so I, I had removed Rush Hour from the custom map pool, and this would be an example of a map that I... I think I would remove. I don't have a problem with a tractor. A tractor is very powerful. I don't necessarily agree with it slowing down games. Like, I understand the logic. I think there's also a counter logic argument or, or a counter argument that is also logical that a tractor speeds up games. Because, for example, Rush Hour, first of all, it's in the name. Things are going to slow down. And I... You rarely see quick games on this map. The way this map is structured, the game is slow. So pointing at a tractor and saying it makes the game slower, I think is incorrect on this map. I think a tractor speeds the game up because it allows the attractor player, assuming there isn't a mirror, to actually engage. Because you can, anywhere where the attractor goes, you have to respect. Or you probably immediately lose the game. That isn't necessarily true of all maps. And if the surrender mechanics were different, I think a tractor would absolutely speed up games, not just because people go, oh my God, I can't beat a tractor and surrender. I think on maps like Lights Out, as soon as you see a tractor come down and you know like, you don't have an out to try and rush it, you can just surrender because unless your opponent blunders, they're going to get you. It's just a matter of time. So a tractor, air quotes, drags the game out there, but it really is the game ending on the spot and effectively ending the game faster, except the, the outside game mechanic of surrenders prevents you from ending the game. Logically. So it both extends and shortens the game in those scenarios. I know that was a lot of words to sum it up in five seconds, but... Um, Coming back to it, I don't inherently have a problem with a tractor as as a whole or a tractor existing like as an idea or anything. It I don't like that it's three range, but that is the theme. The devs clearly have seen no evidence that a tractor needs like no hard quantitative evidence that a tractor needs to be changed. So the only argument in my mind is what it's always been that it's a I don't like the play pattern, which is valid. Um but I can't personally fully argue against the play pattern. Like, I don't know that the play pattern is truly problematic. Um, if it is not every single map. Like, if it was every map was a rush hour type map, then yes, because it gets very samey. But the fact that there are attractor maps, I don't think is inherently problematic. Hey, Gabe, what's good? We just watched your game earlier. A few games ago now, actually. I think. But anyway, all that talk about a tractor. I don't know what the hell bad guy's doing here. I guess they're just giving up the cassowary for the sake of it. Admittedly, Hero has seven phobies on the board, so they're going to have to put... Well, if they want it this turn, they got to put at least a three key. You missed it? Don't worry. The VOD will be up, and uh, this will go up on Friday. Barring catastrophe. I generally edit the videos on Monday and Tuesday and then try and get them up for later in the week. But we got several. We got Monster of the Week. We got this. We got... Uh, maybe I'll put up the VOD for the uh, for Friday's stream because there was some funny stuff on that stream. Most of it non-phobies related. <laughs> Hero with six keys. Bad guy with 13 trying to do their best alien engineer impression, but uh, it's not quite working out for them because ultimately they don't have the commanding board position that alien engineer offers up. Alien Engineer notably kind of, uh, they were getting, I don't want to say rocked, but Alien Engineer was getting beat the first few Monster of the Weeks that they participated in. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the stats, but they, they weren't like winning everything all the time, every single thing they were in. It's getting closer to that now. <laughs> Alien Engineer is, is, uh, has figured out the level one meta and is, is proving it in dominating fashion.
which I was having a different discussion with somebody offline in Discord, and uh, we were talking about phoby bans and things, and my counter-argument is I don't think it matters what phobies I ban or if you had phobie bans, whether it was me doing it or the players doing it or whatever. If you play against Alien Engineer, they're probably going to beat you. And if we're doing a tournament competition, that's how it should be, right? Alien Engineer is one of, if not the best player in the game. So it, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Like, I don't feel at this time, and even before this, like, we, we did the bans in Monster of the Week in one Fright Night to try it out. But I don't feel that people are winning these events on the back of having specific phobies over their opponents. Now, that does come up in individual games, because, like, player A doesn't have Akira, but player B does. And that's less of an issue now post-Akira change. But in a lot of other scenarios, it's like, oh, I don't have this thing, but I have this other thing. Or I adapt my game plan because I don't have the tools to play this play pattern on this map. But the player who wins or loses is pretty much... Like, it, they're all really strong players, right? You're not having people that are worse beating people that are better simply because people that are worse have better phobies or more phobies or something. But in the meantime, Bronze Elf getting back to the game. Getting, oh my god, even the challenge play? Oh, this is brutal. The savagery right here. This is almost a board wipe. Power down on the klepto. You will have the scritch to bring the klepto back up to full full capacity or close to. Maybe over, I don't know, whatever. We'll, we'll see, but... That's kind of backbreaking because I don't think you're going to kill this erratic. And if you do the scritch play, that means you're staying in range. Wait, we're going with what? That is not what I expected, but, I mean, it is a play you can make. That's where we're just going to offer up the jar to its demise. Like, you know, you can just walk forward and kill... Ogre! Onion boy. Mm, I don't think that's going to work out for you, bad guy. Twenty-one and eleven damage from Klepto. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Yo, the bad. O I for honest to God, I forgot the bad omen was even involved in this game. Is this even a good bad omen? Like the best bad omen hit you'll ever see. I hope this is like it powers down the already powered down Klepto. I hope that's what happens. I don't know how that would happen. The Klepto would have to come out, you get a pull with the attractor, then you connect with the Bad Omen. I really want that to happen because it would be comical. Okay, it can happen, chat. It could happen one time, come on. One time. Attractor pull? Oh! <gasps> Real talk, like, that is a powerful bad omen hit. 333. If it did, it would lower the power down, yes, but it's still funny. It's still funny. We're going for the lulls here, like, the game is clearly over. Uh, bad guy, 5-0 to zero panic point advantage, almost no heart health, very few phobies left. They're all doing minuscule damage. I feel as though our heroes kind of got it in the bag here. Ogre's a little dance, not going to save him. Klepto and Jinsting versus the world. Womp, womp. This is why I want to see more Bad Omen, because, like, look at that. That thing... Admittedly, they, our hero killed all the other phobies, but those were two solid phobies, right? Jinsting 
doesn't have great damage output, but Jinsting and Klepto are common phobies that show up on ladder. They're often very high level because they're lower rarity, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you get Jinsting very early on. Uh, and despite that, it still powered it down so that that bad omen was still at like half health. Point is that when I was suggesting the idea of the leap phobia with something like that, it could be very tanky just by going in and powering something down. Um, you kind of have that in the form of um, Wooly Bully already, but I kind of want to see another variant of it. I want to see another variant of it. See if we can make it more of a thing. But either way, GG. GG. All right, so one, two, five, nine. Did we do 11? I might have miscounted. And one, two, three, four. I think we might, might have done one extra. I'm not sure, chat. Because my list kind of got screwed up. My list got a little screwed up. But either way, chat, I'm very tired. So I'm going to be calling a night. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be streaming tomorrow. I might take a night off because uh, I am so tired. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. If not, I'm not sure I will be playing. We'll probably be spreading some more managed democracy. I have not run into the, the wannabe AT-ATs from the automatons yet. I have run into some of the gunships, and the gunships do not impress me. I'm not threatened by them at all. Like, they, they can be a pain in the butt, but I'm not threatened by them. The AT-ATs, I haven't seen in-game, so I don't I don't really have an opinion on them yet. If not, we'll see. Maybe, I mean, we still got to finish Dredge at some point. Um, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. We'll play it by ear. But here's the part where I do remind everybody. Monster of the Week. Uh, also, Fright Night signups are live. Fright Night signups are live. We're going to be using Battlefy instead of um, instead of Challenge this time for a few different reasons. I would like to use Limitless, but they haven't responded to me yet, so I wanted to get the event up and running. I did reach out to the devs about it, so hopefully the announcement will go up for that soon. By the time you're seeing this on YouTube, hopefully it already happened, but if it hasn't, hit up the Random Thoughts Discord link in the description, or if you're in the live stream, exclamation point Discord to get the link. Sign up, sign up link is in there. There are going to be some, some slight rules modifications. We're going to try out a few different things, and we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully this improves things, because we got to find ways to improve, find ways to grow. Uh, try and make things a little more streamlined so we can keep doing them in the future. Uh, always trying to improve. Always trying to improve. I don't smoke, but I feel like I need to smoke after playing one mission of that game. I've been playing on Hell Dive, which is the highest difficulty, level 9, um, for a while. Once you figure out the game, and like, it, I mean, it's like anything. Once you acquire the... Once you have a particular set of skills. like once, the, And that sounds kind of like elitist to a degree but it is very much like okay these enemies represent this kind of threat this is how i deal with these enemies and it does kind of come down to as you climb the difficulty what your loadout is and what your teammates loadouts are because if for example you don't have a way to deal with heavy enemies you're just gonna die and you will not complete the mission because there are going to be heavy enemies especially later like the later bug missions it's like dozens of bile titans um, the later automaton ones, it's hulks, as far as the eye can see. Uh, and if you don't have ways to deal with them, and then the second piece is also experience of don't just aggro the whole damn map. If you aggro the whole map and drag the whole swarm of... It's like playing an MMO. If you run through a zone and go, oh god, I can't fight that, and then you drag every mob because then they aggro guys, and then they aggro guys, and eventually it swells exponentially and you drag them all to like the extraction point you and your team are dead you're not you're not getting out it's just going to be too much stuff you're going to spawn on like you're going to they're going to call in the reinforcements then you're going to drop in and it's going to be a million things there to, to just club you in the head as soon as you you pop out of the hell pod so um 
That's what I need to work on the aggro. You would be surprised how often you can just literally crouch walk or prone crawl past things. Don't underrate it. Um, similarly, you can... Like, with the bots, I think it's more obvious to notice because the bots literally will turn on red eyes and it'll sweep when they notice you. And then if when it stops, it means, like, because you broke line of sight or you're, you're prone breaking line of sight or something like that, they'll stop looking and then you know they're not looking at you anymore and then you can continue on your way. Uh, it's kind of that simple. For the most part. Sometimes you're just going to be like, hey, I'm doing this thing or I'm at a console and then bang. They show up behind you, and it's like, oh, well, I guess I die. Or your teammates are dum dums, and they drag the whole map to you, and you lose. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Sometimes it is, it is hopeless, but it's not always hopeless. And to be honest, it's probably never hopeless. But it's a multiplayer game. Sometimes it's hopeless. <laughs> it's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. But yeah, we might we might uh, liberate some democracy, liberate some planets, save some, spread some managed democracy tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, I am going to call it a night, chat. We'll see if we're back tomorrow. If not, we'll be back at the end of the week. You know the usual drill. So as always, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time for more Random Thoughts.